Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. <clears throat> we give your name the honor. We thank you right now, God, for waking us up, God. We thank you right now for starting us on our way. We thank you, God, for life, health, and strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. Hallelujah. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Oh.
ಹೇಳಿದರೆ yourself back to the lord he's waiting on you he's waiting on you ah so he's waiting on it he's waiting on it he's waiting on it when his arms open wide he's waiting on ah so can i get it what you are uh, what is spirit 
right now. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God. We thank you for coming in, God. We thank you for your presence. Oh, my God. minister without you, God. The God that you take over now. Oh. So we thank you now. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We praise your name. We adore your name. We adore your name. We adore your Oh, a change, a change in my life, God, you change my life one day, you change me, God, you change Good morning, Mama Joyce. Good morning, everybody. I love you too. We'll never be the same. Hallelujah. If you get in this place of worship with me, hallelujah. I believe God will begin to destroy and break every yoke because this is the anointing of God. It's the anointing of God that breaks every yoke. Chain that breaks every old that every chain that we've been bound. Cause he changed my walk, he changed my tongue, he changed me. Oh God, I love you, Lord. Oh, Abba. Abba.
that's where it's at, God. That's where it's at, y'all. It's in worship. It's in our worship. It's in our worship. In our worship. In 2 Chronicles 20, God sent, told the King Jehoshaphat to put out the worshipers. He told him to put out the worshipers first. And because he was obedient to God, when they got to the battle, it was all over. Stay there, Philip. It was all over. When he put the worshipers out front, it was all over. The enemies were defeated. It's going to be in our worship. Getting in a place in God. Getting at the feet of Jesus. And allowing God to move in our lives. Oh, we sing above. So we thank you now. We thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the worship. And so we're going to get into this word that God has given me. Such a powerful word that really God was speaking to me. He was speaking to me about me. And then he told me to share it with you all today and uh, the title as you can see is how you do it seeking validation and approval how are you doing so many times that thing right there how you're doing we're waiting for somebody to ask us how are you doing? We're waiting for somebody to be concerned about us. And because of that, seeking that validation and approval, because we are waiting on somebody to validate us, we're waiting for somebody to ask us, how you doing? Because we are humans and we uh, are sometimes ruled by our emotions and our feelings. Many times that we are looking for somebody to ask us, how you doing? And many times we may not get that. Many times we may not get what it is that we are searching for. So, when I was preparing this message all week long and all uh, uh, for since I began in the ministry, since I began and ordained as a pastor, I have was ordained in the midst of a pandemic. And so my headship is in Atlanta. And so in the midst of the pandemic, the only way you could really get out there was to be on Facebook or using social media outlets, YouTube and Instagram. Many people that have churches were doing, are doing and still doing the same thing. But now that the uh, churches are opening back up, people are going back to their churches. People are going back to their, their, their ministries. 
And when you're like me, hallelujah, just got ordained and just started this thing. And the only way you could do that was in through to get out there is through social media. So I'm on this journey to fulfill my purpose as to why God has called me here on earth. Thank you, Philip. God bless you. So in my doing that, I'm always doing self-evaluations of me and my direction and my decisions that I'm making. Here lately, I have been uh, really been seeking God about my ministry, finding a building, going to the next level. Do people take me seriously as a pastor because I don't have a building? I find myself seeking for others' validation. Now, as much as I have studied and understand how that can change my focus. Because I'm seeking the approval of others, not God. Will get me in a trap. And so many times, the reason why I always uh, try to be transparent when I'm ministering is because I want you to understand that I too struggle with the same things that you are struggling in. And a lot of times that transparency helps other people, hallelujah, to understand uh, who is our source and where we're supposed to go to. And so what that have done for me, because I have been a, a, a people pleaser and I always uh, was always trying to seek others for that validation. It has got me in a trap. It has caused me to lose focus. It has distracted me. It has caused me to look unto a man rather than God. I find myself still become uh, still uh, uh, doing these things because I'm looking at how I measure up. Isn't that what we do, Philip? We always, when we're seeking uh, 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 our purpose, when we're seeking a validation, when we're seeking approval, we're always looking and comparing how I measure up to somebody else. And because of that thing, uh, 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 it causes us to lose focus on what God has actually caused us to do. And the reason why he has put us here on this earth. So we start uh, uh, comparing ourselves to this person. I'm comparing myself to other people, to other pastors, to other people that may have. And, 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 and how can you do that when, when you're looking and comparing yourself by somebody that's been in the ministry years and years and years? They didn't start out that way. But that's what we start doing. When we start seeking it from people, when we start seeking it from others, how do I measure up to others in the ministry? What are they doing? We uh, 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 do this and we have all done this. And sometimes we're in that place right now of doing it, especially when we are in transition and preparation. A lot of times when we don't exactly know direction, a lot of times we don't know where, what step, steps that we are to take. 
A lot of times we are in that transition and preparation for God to get us to the place that he has called us to. So we begin to doubt. So we begin to have fears. So we begin to have anxieties. Okay, Bishop, love you. Because we begin to have anxieties, because we begin uh, uh, to begin to uh, uh, look at where we are and the lack of that we have. Especially when you're starting a ministry like me, or are or, or, or you start, are you in school, or you want to go to school, and you're still not knowing how you're going to do it, or if you are looking for a career and you don't know if you're going to find one, or you are looking for something and you don't know if you're going to find it, seeking validation. Because we want to be accepted and want to be successful. Because it seems that how many people say they uh, 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 we are looking for that thing. The reason why uh, we are looking for these things and seeking these things, seeking validation uh, and approval uh, is because we want to be accepted. We want to be successful. Really, that's what it's all about, Philip. That right? We want to, we don't want to be a failure, right? We we want to be able. So we start looking at others and how they did it. And we start looking at others and we start looking at them and we start seeing, well, look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. And look how they made it. So we take our eyes off of the one who created us, right? As long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But it was when he started to look away. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. It was when he began to look away. It was beginning when he began to hear the noise, when he began to see the waves moving, when he began to, uh, to feel the waves, when he began to, to hear the water rising, he began to lose focus and take his eyes off of Jesus. And so when God has called us and God has told us, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. We forget he is the one that called us to it. He is the one that will see us through. He is the one that we should be seeking approval and validation from. But we are in our flesh. And it is a humanistic issue. It's something that we all wrestle with. We, uh, uh, because I, my media, uh, uh, media is, uh, uh, in order to get the message out, in order to do it, I have to use social media for now. Until God let me know. So you're looking at how many people come on. You're looking at how many people like it. And, and you start thinking that that's a reflection of who you are. You start looking at, well, am I called? Oh, well, am I? Because this person, oh, what God, what? And so you start looking at those things. And in my uh, uh, studying uh, uh, about this message, there is a psychological, a psychology theory by Maslow hierarchy of needs. And on that Maslow hierarchy of need, there is a pyramid. And in that pyramid, so picture this pyramid, right? So picture this pyramid with at the top of the steep of the pyramid is self-actualization. Who is self? Who am I? It's self-actualization. So uh, my identity.
identity? Who do I identify myself with? How do I identify myself? Self-actualization, who am I? And then right under that is esteem. Self-esteem. How is my self-esteem? How do I, I look at myself? Do I feel worthy? Do I, 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 do I have confidence in who I am? Am I uh, this or am I that? How do I see myself in comparison? Then on this, uh, the third level, we have love and belonging. Love and belonging. Where do I fit in? Do my family love me? Do I fit into this group? Do I fit into this? Do I fit in to this group or, 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 or this membership? Am I really a pastor because of who follows me? Am I really who God has called me to be? Am I, I, do I belong? Do I fit in? So mass law shows how esteem and love belonging is one, how esteem and love slash belonging is one of the, are one, are the essentials, I'm sorry, are the essential components of human motivation. Facebook or social media is tied to that, right? Because we see it all the time. If I get a like or if I get a love, look at social media, Instagram, uh, uh, how many tweets I get, how many people like me, uh, how, how, how many followings I have. That's the type of society that we live in now. It's really not about really... Uh, and that determines so much of who we are today. That determines so much of what we do and how we do it. That determines so much of how we move and how instead of looking at is my line lining up with what the purpose that God has called me here to do. Seeking uh, those uh, 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 approvals on a daily, a daily. Philip showed me one time uh, when he was home, he showed me about the screen time on the phone. And he began to show me that uh, uh, in his screen time on his phone that he spent more time using social media than he did doing anything else. So on Facebook, we share photos, update status in hopes of getting approval by our Facebook friends. Seeking this validation from man has gotten me into trouble. And it's caused me many times to doubt who I am and who God has called me to be. So many times we get in discouraged. Because uh, 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 others don't really understand who we are. Because it has caused me to be a people pleaser. And when we do that, we start seeking the approval of others that we start to change our focus. And begin to do things because we are seeking the approval of others. If we are regularly seeking such validation, then it might escalate to where then it becomes a need. Not a need for God to give us that validation, but then we become so uh, addicted or so obsessed with that thing uh, of seeking it. Now it's like we got to have it. So now we start doing things in order to get it. We start saying things in order to get it. Start and then it start affecting our daily, everyday lives and our choices. I read this in preparation in my study. 
And, and, and this thing was so true right here. It was a quote that I got from off of, uh, of a page and it says, I'm not what I think I am. I'm not what I think I am. I am what I think you think I am. <laughs> Isn't that really what we're doing, Philip? I'm going to say that again. This is very powerful. I'm not what I think I am. I am what I think you think I am. That's what validation does. That's what trying to seek validation and approval from man does. Because you are saying, how you doing? So you asking that person to tell you how you doing. So then it's like, so when you begin to speak and you start talking about how you doing, then that person begin to speak into you. And then what happens is, is when you're seeking that type of stuff, then you begin to take on what they believe, what they think, how they feel, how, oh my God. So we begin to seek this validation. We begin to seek this approval. So then our thoughts are really <laughs> not what a man thinking so is he, but what you think about me so I am. What you think about me so I am. I read this in my preparation. I am not what I think I am. I am what I think you think I am. And that's the reason why it is dangerous. That's the reason why it is dangerous for me to do that. I can only talk about me because that's what I have started and started to do. And God had to give me this word and he said, seek my approval and my validation. He told me to seek him. Stop worrying about what well, because you ain't got this. I called you. I told you to do this. I told you to do that. And that's what God told me. And he told me to share this with y'all today. Is stop seeking validation and approval from man. Because then we do begin to think like this quote, I am, I'm, I'm not what I think I am. I am what I think you think I am. Because we are human and we are in our flesh, these things take over and sometimes take precedence over our lives. And they take precedence over our decisions that we make. Because we begin to seek the approval of man, what they think, how they feel. And I thank God because let me tell you something. The people that come on, y'all do mother, mama Joyce. Um, uh, I see Erica on there. Bishop. I saw Benji on there. I saw auntie Devon on here. Yes, that is a huge encourager for me, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that when we have been called, when God has given us a call and a purpose, so many times we start looking for other people to validate us and then we lose sight of what God has told us to do in the first place. But listen to this, y'all. But I have great news that seeking validation is not wrong. It's just who we seek it from. As believers, we must seek validation or approval from God. He is the one that has created us and have the plan for our lives. Unlike Facebook or social media, God is the one that we should be looking to for acceptance and approval. I was reminded of this this morning 
In Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a, a, a future and a hope. Sometimes when uh, God calls us to do something, you may not have nobody that agrees. You may not have nobody that believes. You may not have nobody that will follow you. But God wants to see if we will be obedient to him. God wants to see if we'll still do what he told us to do. Look what happened with Daniel and the Hebrew boys, right? Remember when the king had told them that they could not, uh, uh, that they couldn't pray. And, um, and look what happened because uh, Daniel prayed anyway. And the Hebrew boys prayed anyway. Out of all of the people that listened to the king, they didn't. Because guess what? They wasn't seeking the approval of the king. Because they knew what God had told them to do. And so they continued praying three times a day. And because they did that, one of uh, the, the Hebrew boys got thrown into the fiery furnace. And then Daniel got thrown into the lion's den. But do you understand even in the lion's den, when God has, uh, has, uh, validated you, when God, and that means he has called you, when God has told you to do something, y'all, guess what? You got to do it. And when you do those things, God is going to lift you up. God is the one that's going to protect you. He is not a respectable person. God, what he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and what he did for Daniel, he would do the same thing for us. But we must start first do what God has called us to do. We must first stretch out. So God has called me. I've been doing this for a year now. God has called me. So now I got to get to my next level, but I can't get to that next level in God by looking at what others are, 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 are and seeking others validation and others approval. I got to look to God so he can tell me what's my next move. Is it to go out? To, 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 to seek this? Is it to go out to do this? I, it has to be God because God is the one that put me there. God is the one that put me here. So many times we're not going to have a following. Many times with God, when he calls us to do something, we're going to have to walk it alone. Many times when God calls us to do stuff, guess what? He'll strip friends away. Many times when God calls us to do stuff, he will take people from a and remove people out of our lives. Many times when God calls us to do stuff, and Erica, you know this, he'll put you in a quiet place when you all alone. So that he can hear, so that you can hear him. And so when you do get up to move, guess what? You are in position to succeed. There is no failure in Christ. With man, we can fail. But with God, there is no failure. With God, when God tells us to do something, there is no failure. If anything that I have learned from studying my Bible it has never been about the numbers anyway. <laughs> My God, he's a good God, y'all. It has never been about the numbers. If you look at Philip Gideon, right? He only had, in the beginning, he had 3,000 soldiers. 3,000. And what did God do? He reduced that army down to three, 300. 
out of all of the hundreds of thousands of people that they were going to have to fight. If you look at um, so many examples in the Bible where God has reduced the number, look at, uh, if you look at Exodus, if you look at um, um, what it was, the 14th chapter, I believe, when um, um, or somewhere up in there, when 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 when, when God told uh, Moses to send out the uh, the 12 to go into uh, the city uh, to see about possessing the land of Canaan, what happened? Some of them came back. And it wasn't about the number. They compared to those giants that they were going to have to defeat. They were outnumbered. They were too small to beat them. But with God, all things are possible. When God tells you to do something, it's going to happen. Look what happened. It was never about the numbers. It was never about the following. Only two came back and said that we can possess the land. Two. And guess what? Those were the two that made it in. Because they were seeking that approval and they knew that God validated them. They knew that God was going to be there for them. They knew that God had called them. They knew that God would protect them. They knew that God was for them. And they knew that there was nothing too hard for God. So that's one of the things that I've learned that in studying the word of God, that has never been about the numbers anyway. When God has called you to a thing, just do it. Stop looking around and wondering and looking at other people. And that's what I've been doing, looking at other people and what they've started and how they started it, how, how they got support. And, and if I had this person, but why do I do that? Why do we do that, y'all? When we got the biggest supporter, when we got the biggest one that, that can make it happen, we got God Almighty. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Because we are human and we're seeking it. And because we don't forgot who we are in Christ. We don't forgot who God is. God can turn anything around. God can turn any situation around. When God is for us, who can be against us? He can put us on any football team. But we must do the work. What did he say? He told them to uh, go and possess the land. They were sitting up there worrying about, uh, uh, the other ones was worrying about how big they were, how big the giant is, how big the mountain is, how big the situation is. But when God tells you to do something, you got to know that he's going to be there and fight for you. Who better to fight for us than God? Who better to open up the door than God? That means when God opened the door, no man can close it. When God tells you to do something, you're not going to fail. So when God calls us to do something, just do it. Stop looking around and, and just, just be obedient. On Friday at the jail ministry, I go to the jail uh, ministry up here at Bradford County on uh, the second Fridays. It's such a joy to go there. Hallelujah. And, and talk with the ladies and minister to the lady. It was such an awesome service and, and people got saved and delivered and set free. And, and, and I, was, I was telling my Auntie Mamie, I said, Auntie Mamie, this is what I can do for the rest of my life. This is what I know. I, I, if, if it was my job, I would be so happy if that's all I could do was to minister and, and to pray for people and, and to talk about the Lord and, and talk about his goodness. And so the word that I came from uh, uh, was what 
I um came from um uh, a while ago. I think it was in the last month of 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 January. Second Chronicles sixteen and nine. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. And what I told them, I said, listen to this again. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. It said, it didn't say that he looking to and fro. He said he run it. His eyes are running to and fro. So he's looking for somebody that is law. Their heart is law to him. It didn't say something about the mistakes you made. He didn't say anything about the decisions that you made. He didn't say about uh, 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 the, the times that you didn't listen to him. Uh, he didn't say about the times when you were uh, disobedient. He said he's running. His eyes are running. That means when you run running Philip that means you are you going fast that means you trying to hurry up to find somebody uh that you can bless you hurry up so he trying to he, he's looking to see can I I put you here can I give you the ministry can I give you the building can I trust you with what I've called you to do are you ready he's saying he's saying he's looking for those who are, uh, 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 the heart is loyal to him. He knows that we're not perfect. He knows that we're going to make mistakes. He knows that what we have done, he knows all about us, but he's saying, is your heart law? Is you like David? Is you, is you like the man after my own heart? Is you like him that will repent when you do do wrong? Uh-uh. Is your heart law? Because he want to bless us. But we got to keep our eyes on him and not on man. This is this word for me too. So he's not looking at you for what you've done, the mistakes you've made, the decisions, the, the poor choices, but he's looking at your heart. Is your heart law? Are you ready for this thing that he, he's running? His eyes are running to see what he can do on our behalf. Let us start back at Jesus. Let us start looking back and seeking Jesus. Because he's going to be the one that validate us. And that places us into the place that he has prepared for us. That's how we're going to get there. That's how we're going to get to the place that God has for us. Is in our seeking him. In our relationship with him in my closing. In our relationship with him and seeking him. That's how we're going to get the validation and the approval of where God is taking us. So in this time of preparation, in this time of transition, just like I'm in right now of seeking God for the next level in ministry, because I know I can't be doing this, I'm gonna do this, but I got to go to the next level. Now that the pandemic and different things are lining up, I got to go to the next level. Is it going out on Sundays to 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 have per, uh, church in the park when it warms up, feeding the people? Jesus Christ Deliverance Ministry. It's time to go to the next level. And I can't do it by comparing myself 
and measuring myself by other people. Seeking God. If God has told you to start a new business and 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 or go back to school or 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 or, or change your major if you're already in school, uh, whatever it may be, seek His approval. Seek His validation. quote that I said that I that I'm not what I think I am I am what I think you think I am and change that and say I'm not what I think I am but God I am what you say I am That's where I fell short. Because I've been seeking belongingness. Where do I fit in? Where do I fit in in this, in this ministry thing? And how do I fit in here? But I'm not in a race for other people. I'm not in a race. God has called me because there are people assigned to me. There are people that are waiting on Pertina. So that's why there is no competition. But because of the way society has it, who has the biggest following? Who has the mega church? Who has all of those things? But are people really getting set free? people really get it set free are people really getting delivered if I go out there on the street and I witness to one person and that person gets saved many times that's more than some people even see in the church Plant, so 
some water, but God give the increase. If your job is just to plant, plant. If your job is just to water, water. And God will give the increase. Begin to open up your mouth. Stop thinking about it and just do it. And you're going to see a lot of people will go get set free and delivered. And you know what that's going to do when you start to speak? It's going to build your faith up and confidence and that you hear God. But if you don't start doing it, how will you know? You got to start doing it. And the more you do it, the more you're going to be confident in doing it. Because you hear from God. God speaks to you. Be obedient. So we thank you for this word today. We thank you, God, for using us. And God, putting us in position to be used. So we thank you for the word. We thank you for who you are in our life. We thank you, God, for the ones that's watching now and the ones that will watch, God. That, God, that you will begin to do a mighty work in our lives. That, God, if we have been that person that have been seeking approval and seeking uh, uh, for validation from others and not and, and have taken on that image and that are not seeking you, God. Lord, we ask for forgiveness right now. God, we ask, God, for forgiveness, God. That, God, that we will begin to seek you and look unto you right now in the name of Jesus. That we will begin to look to you, God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We cancel every assignment of the enemy that will come in to try to block, to stop, to hinder your people, God, from being all and getting to the place that God, that you called them to be, God. And that they too will begin to open up their mouth and begin to speak the word of God. That they will not be worried about what people think and what people are going to say. Or whether or not they will receive what they're saying, God. But God, it is time that we begin to speak and we begin to cry out and spare not that Jesus is coming. We see that people on social media can say whatever they want, can do whatever they want. But when we begin to talk about Jesus, when we begin to talk about the Lord, then we got to be censored. We choose to do what God has called us to do because it's easy to do nothing. But it's uncomfortable when we got to get out and do something. But it's going to be in that uncomfortable ability that's going to get us to the place that God has called us to be. And so we thank you now, God, for getting us out of our comfort zone. God, for getting us out of that place that's easy. Getting us out of that place that's easy. And that God, that we will begin to seek you like never before. For where we belong. What is our purpose? And God, what do you want me to do with it? Now that I'm in this place, God, it's your job. These are your people. Where do you want me to be? Because he will have to place me there. 
So we thank you now for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. For God, you are an awesome God. And we give your name the praise. We thank you, God, for the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And we give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.